everybody. It's Jessica Stone at Stansbury Research, along with Amanda Kowochi, our healthcare and health and wellness researcher. And we want to talk today about how to take care of your parents during this season of quarantining and uh, being extra careful about our health during the COVID-19 crisis in the United States. Um, Amanda, I wanted to first begin by just asking you what your thoughts are about how much food and supplies do we need to have in our parents' homes, uh, especially if we don't live with them and we have to deliver them? Because obviously we've seen a lot of panic buying. Should we be giving them extra supplies or just a week at a time? Uh, so that's a great question, and I think it's something we've all been asking, not just for our parents, but also for ourselves. How many times do we have to go to the store? How much should we really be stocking up on? Uh, a lot of the you know, notices that I've seen, especially here in the state of Maryland, we're not quite shelter in place yet, but we're getting close. Uh, a lot of people are advising about one week's worth of supplies. Um, I would say probably closer to two weeks, because if we do a shutdown, it's probably going to be about the 14, 15 day mark is what we've been seeing. Um, we're not quite sure where that is yet. So uh, what we are seeing is that even in states that have shelter in place orders, people can still go to the grocery store. Now they do want you to limit your trips, go probably just once a week, make sure you plan it. Um, go for your, you know, for your parents, for any relatives that you're taking care of, especially if they're 60 and older, you really don't want them leaving the house. How careful do you need to be cleaning and disinfecting when you're making deliveries? This is something that, you know, we've got people in the neighborhood who are helping some of the older neighbors, um, and it's something people are really concerned about. Nobody wants to infect somebody that's older and more vulnerable. My mom is taking care of my 94-year-old grandmother. Um, so when she goes to deliver groceries, she wears gloves, she washes everything, she takes them out of the bags, cleans everything before she puts it in the fridge. And then, you know, make sure the bags go right in the trash, her gloves come off, she washes her hands. Um, anything that she's touched on the way in the house, she's disinfected. Um, she's been very, very careful because at 94, you know, my grandmother's in one of the very high risk groups. Um, so we really want to make sure, honestly, the way I look at it is pretend that you have something very contagious, like the flu. You want to make sure if you're taking care of someone else, you want to make sure they don't get it. So disinfect, you know, uh, light switches, doorknobs, things like that that you touch and maybe don't think about it on a regular basis. Um, it's always better to be careful in situations like this. Now, one thing that I think everybody is um, learning is that we have to get out of the house and we do have to kind of protect our mental well-being. What are some tips you have uh, to help us help our parents do that or our grandparents do that? It is good to get some sunshine. And we talked in our last video about the importance of going out um, for a walk or going gardening as long as you're not around other people because um, you still want to keep that six feet distance. Mm -hmm. um, and that's great for, you know, for you, for your parents, for anyone like that. If they can't get up, if they're not mobile, um, you know, encourage them to maybe sit in their sunroom or do something uh, around the house. I actually just heard that the YMCA has free classes online now. So if you're parent or someone has access to the internet, that's a great way for them to get moving too because they have some senior specific videos on there. Um, and also, I know YouTube is a great source. Uh, when I, I used to work at a, a retirement home and we did a lot of uh, exercises where people were seated. So it was, you can still get some exercise and movement even if you're not mobile and able to stand out of your chair. Um, so there's some great videos on there too and I'm sure we'll post them on a future uh, issue of Health and Wealth Bulletin too. So you bring up a really good point that technology is solving some of this isolation we're feeling, but older Americans are not necessarily known for being the early adapters and the most technologically savvy. So how can we help them help themselves access that type of, of exercise training or FaceTiming with friends just to have a sense of community and well-being? I have been thinking about this question a lot. Uh, my mom is very resistant for new forms of technology, but uh, she has been using, you know, the internet more. She's been using her tap. Now she has a tablet, so she's been using that. Um, we're trying to figure out ways to set up uh, calling. I mean, Skype is pretty simple and easy to use. Um, I think the key is to find something that's simple enough that you can explain it over the phone. Um, you know, we are very blessed that we have this kind of uh, technology to help us stay in touch. But, you know, again, I come back to my grandmother. She's 94. She doesn't have any kind of computer. She doesn't even have internet. Um, so it's really on my mind to call her more regularly. And I think that's a key here. And it's something that's very easy for us to overlook if we're so used to technology. We're so used to being able to just send someone an email. 
um, but really making sure that you have the time to call and make it a priority. Thanks so much for your thoughts, Amanda Koochi from Stansberry Research. We appreciate your time. And if you would like to uh, have more of this type of content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or find us on Facebook, Twitter, or on Instagram. Thanks for watching.